Hey guys, Jeremiah here to talk to you about OPQRST. One of the most important tasks of an EMT is performing a good patient assessment. It doesn't matter if you go on a medical, a trauma, or even if you get a refusal, you're gonna do a patient assessment to some extent. So understanding how to perform a good assessment and, to, and uh, what questions to ask is really key to providing the best and most efficient care that we can to our patients. So in the classroom, oftentimes when my students are preparing for the NREMT medical assessment skill, I see them fumble when they get to the history taking portion of the assessment. Specifically, when it comes to OPQRST, they just don't know what questions to ask. So you'll see here on the board, I've written out the OPQRST mnemonic, and alongside, I have the questions that you should be asking when you get here. Uh, in blue, you'll see I have a lot of good clarifying questions you should be asking too. So we'll start with O. O is for onset, and we wanna ask, when did the pain start? Right, we're going to ask this for obvious reasons. It's going to tell us when the pain started, how long it's been going on, and it's going to help to paint a timeline for us. A great clarifying question to ask would be, is the pain acute? Did it happen suddenly or gradual onset? Right, we do know that uh, someone who has sudden or abrupt pain uh, usually is suffering from some serious underlying illness or injury. Provocation. Provocation means asking, does anything make the pain feel worse? Palliation means asking, does anything make the pain feel better? Good clarifying questions to ask would be, uh, does the pain change with rest? Uh, does the pain maybe worsen with movement? And if you're performing uh, a patient examination, you're palpating the chest, you wanna know if that uh, irritates uh, the patient or um, if it makes the condition worse. Quality. So with quality, we want to ask the patient to describe their pain. What does it feel like? We want to make sure that we don't give the patient uh, answers such as, uh, is your pain dull, is it crushing, or is it stabbing? Right? When you do that, what you've done is you've limited uh, your patient's answers to the choices that you provided to them. Another good clarifying question to ask would be, has the pain changed in any way? Right? We want to know if maybe the pain started um, as a throbbing sensation and is now sharp and stabbing. That's significant. Radiation. So with radiation, we want to ask the patient, um, does their pain move or travel anywhere? A good clarifying question to ask would be, has the pain always been there or did it start somewhere else um, and now this is where they're experiencing pain? Either way, it's an important question to ask. Case in point, if someone's suffering from an MI and they have chest pain that radiates to the left arm and jaw, it's gonna help us to uh, further suspect that they're having an MI. Severity, so we wanna ask the patient on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst pain of the patient's life, what is their level of pain right now? Right, a great clarifying question to ask would be, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst pain of their life, what was their level of pain when it started? All right, this is an important question to ask because it's gonna help us to determine uh, if the pain or the patient's condition has worsened, if it's improved, or if it's unchanged. Time, so when you get to time, make sure you don't ask when the pain started. All right, we've already asked that up top with onset. When you get to time, you wanna ask your patient, is the pain constant or does it come and go? Again, this is going to help us to determine how severe it is. Another good clarifying question to ask would be, is there a predictable pattern to the pain or does it happen randomly? Bonus questions. So there's a couple other good questions um, to ask your patients when you're doing an assessment. One would be, has the patient done anything to help themselves or to help relieve the pain? Right, we wanna ask this because it may change our treatment. For example, if you show up for a patient who's suffering from chest pain and they've already taken three nitro, as an EMT, we're not going to be able to give them any more nitroglycerin, so that's going to change our treatment. Another really good question to ask would be, has this ever happened to the patient before? All right, this may clue you in right away to what's going on with them. Even though it's not our job to diagnose, being able to determine what's going on with them is going to better help us to help them. All right, so I hope you found this information useful or helpful. If you did, uh, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. As always, take care and be safe.